Welcome back. Good to have you back with me. Uh, summer now, so shorter sleeves today. Sun shining in through the window. Let's get started. Just lying down. First of all, bring one knee into the body. Grab hold of that knee with both hands. Remember, breathing is just a normal breath. Try and relax your breath. You can breathe through the nose throughout. Never forcing the breath. We're not trying to synchronize it with any particular movement. Okay, bring the other knee into the body now. Try and tuck the chin down a little bit. Stretch out into the heel of the other leg. You can close your eyes as often as possible. Tune into what you're feeling. So both knees together now, gently rocking, swaying from side to side. And bringing the feet down, we're going to move into a twist. So stretching one leg out along the floor, bend the other knee, you're going to roll that knee over the body towards one side, resting the inside of the ankle on the inside of the other knee to provide support. Try to ensure that the other foot rolls all the way over into the floor. Turn the chin towards the shoulder. Let's do the other side now. So just stretching out the first leg and rolling the other knee over now. Looking across the opposite arm. Palm faced up if you can, just helps the shoulders relax a little bit more. Closing the eyes. Each side will be quite different. And then bringing that knee back up. We're going to roll over onto the, the front of the body now for what starts off as the Cobra. Or should I say the Sphinx rather, starts off on the elbows. So the first part of it is the Sphinx, and if you feel like raising up a little higher into the Cobra by taking the elbows off the floor, in a few moments you can do that. If you prefer to stay on the elbows, that's absolutely fine too. So I've just lifted my elbows, making it just that little bit stronger, a little higher up. If you were to take the elbows off the ground and your hands were that far forwards that it doesn't make any difference whether the elbows are off the floor, then choose to stay on the elbows. It's only worth lifting the elbows if it does take you a little bit higher up than the original elbow height. So I'm actually going a little bit higher still, and in order to do that, you might have noticed I came down to the elbows first, then shifted the hands a little closer, and then lifted back up again. You can raise the chin so you're looking more upwards as well. Gives you a nice stretch on the front surface of the body and including on the neck. Beautiful squeeze to the lower back. Possibly a mild stretch on the front of the body as well. The cobra back bends. Very valuable postures to be doing. <laughs> You'll notice I come down from time to time um, the season of Hay fever is also upon us, and I think I just came down because I felt I was about to sneeze. <laughs> In fact, if you do feel like you're going to sneeze for whatever reason, it is always a wise idea, if you can, to come down from a posture. Just so you're not creating pressure around the discs, particularly of the spine, when you um, sneeze. Okay, so we've moved slowly out of that cobra into a child's pose. The arms stretching out in front and the knees wide here. I'm about to do a twist as well, so... From the child's pose with the arms forwards, you take one arm 
under and out to the side, first one side and then the other. Really nice twist for the spine and lower back. And then coming out of that, we're going to do, first of all, a lunge, a nice stretch for the front of the thigh. You'll notice I just move my foot so that roughly the ankle is below the knee joint. And so when you sink forward, you get that really nice stretch across the front of the thigh. Easing back into the hamstring, which is the back of the thigh now. And taking that foot just a little bit further forwards and moving slowly into a split. So the way to come into a split is first of all take the front foot slightly further forwards and then shuffle with the back foot slowly moving the feet further and further apart forwards and backwards. Find a place where you can hold it comfortably without straining without any pressure or, or discomfort in the knee. I'm going to come out of that side now, so tucking the back toes and shuffling forwards. We'll switch straight across to the other leg, so ankle underneath the knee again of the other foot so we're stretching the quadricep front of the thigh sinking as low as we can comfortably beautiful stretch across the front of the other leg now so we're doing the, the front of one leg that's the quadricep back of the other leg that's the hamstring then you put the two things together for the split so still in the quadricep at the moment stretching the front of that other leg now Easing back into the hamstring, one of the tightest muscles in our bodies. Pulling away from the heel to give you that stronger stretch. Notice that the front knee is bent, it doesn't have to be straight. Some of you may be able to straighten it, it doesn't matter. Um, it can be bent, you'll still feel the hamstring. So taking this into the split on this side as well now. So you're going to shuffle that front foot a little bit further forwards. Use the back toes to slowly maneuver the back foot further and further backwards. You can see the difference on the two sides for me as well today. And just holding. Sinking. Allow the posture to <clears throat> excuse me, deepen as you hold it. Closing the eyes if you can. Just focusing on what you're feeling here. Making sure it's pleasant, not unpleasant. Try and stay just a little back from maximum. A little away from what we call the edge. That point where it's starting to get a little bit too strong. So now tucking, shuffling, bringing that back knee further and further forwards. So we're now out of that split. I'm just going to do a quick stretch, easing backwards into what's sometimes referred to as a hero posture. Uh, a fairly casual version of that. I just felt like a, an extra stretch on the front of the thighs. And then we're going to do a complement to um, that sequence we've just done. A stronger stretch for the, the quadricep, having loosened these muscles up. So you'll notice I've got one hand on the floor next to the ankle. I've bent the back knee and I'm slowly reaching back for the ankle. Now, if you can't reach the ankle, don't panic. Don't worry. You can always just bend the knee, 
lift the foot off the ground and just squeeze that ankle in towards the back of the thigh. And if you'd rather, if that's not possible, just keep the back foot on the ground and go for the, the straightforward version of the quadricep stretch, which we've already done once, no harm in doing it again. And then we're going to go for a stretch that works the glutes side of the thigh. Taking one foot over to the outside of the knee. So we're in a sitting position now for those of you um, who aren't quite following in the same way the, the video. That's why I'm doing the voiceover so you can follow when I'm changing postures. I do recommend the visual as well. This is not a, a complete audio uh, to follow along to track you do really need the visual as well I'm just helping you along so you don't have to be constantly looking towards the video so it's half of the the gomukhasana posture in Sanskrit you're taking one ankle to the outside of the knee trying to push both sitting bones down squarely into the ground really nice stretch across the glute area side of the hip and thigh can add a little bit of a twist to it, which I think I'd do at some point here. It's never about force. Think in, in terms of releasing muscles, joints, rather than forcing a movement or a shape. It's not about the shape, it's about how it feels. It's not about how far you go but about how the posture feels that matter so i just shifted my outside for a little bit further back got a stronger stretch and then i'm going to switch and get to go to the other side now so taking the other foot to the outside of the leg or thigh and slowly shifting that back a little bit further. Get a little bit of a whirring noise in the background. It's actually the fan and the motor of my uh, computer here, which I'm trying to cut out as much as I can, but I think that might still come through in the recording. I don't th think it should impact too much on your ability to hear what I'm saying though, so um, I hope you're okay with that. These are not strictly being timed from one side to the other, so if you feel like coming out of something earlier, you can. That's always the case anyway. You don't have to wait for me to stop a posture to come out of it yourself. If you decided you wanted to stay in something longer yourself, you can. You can always pause the video, of course, and stay as long as you like. And then restart it when you're ready to change postures or sides. That's the beauty of this type of practice. Okay, so we're going to come out of that. We're going to make use of the wall that we have here today. So we're going to come... The, the trick to this is actually sitting right up against the wall with your hip bone against the wall. So when you swivel around, you don't have to shuffle in too close. So I kind of did that on one movement. Sit side onto the wall, swivel the legs up, and then you separate the legs. My knee is feeling a little bit better today, so um, I am still holding on to the legs. You don't have to do that. They will more than likely stay up the wall without you having to hold them. Even if the knee's bent, it's, it's, it's okay for the knee to be bent. Have a quick check, look at the height of the feet, make sure they're the same height 
the, the same level on the wall. You'd be surprised if you don't actually have a look at that. It's sometimes not the case. Tuck the chin, make sure your head's not tipping backwards in this posture. Obviously quite a strong stretch on the inside of the legs, particularly the inside of the knee. Be careful of that area. That's one of the reasons I'm doing it. It's such a nice stretch for a knee that has been um, giving me problems recently. Almost healed now though. Of its own accord I might add. Okay, so we're sliding the feet and the legs together now. Just bending a little longer there with the feet together, legs stretched up the wall. Beautiful stretch for the back of the thighs and also the lower back. It's a really nice lower back stretch. Okay, so now coming into a pretty relaxed version of Janu Susasana, which is one leg stretching forwards, one leg out to the side with knee bent. Notice that the forward leg you can have bent and whatever bend allows you to tip forwards easily. If you're a lot more flexible you can have the leg as straight as you would like it to be. But often bending that joint allows you to tip forwards a little bit more easily. That's going to do one side and then of course the other to stretch the back of both legs and so now switching legs. You'll notice quite a difference on the two sides. So on that uh, left leg forward side I can straighten my leg a lot more than the first. That is possibly in relation to that uh, injury that I had in the knee. Taking your time now we're going to do both legs stretched out in front both legs bent. If there's a difference on the two sides, which there often is, the bend in the leg will be determined by the tighter side. You want to try and get the knees fairly close together. Now, I'm holding on to my feet, but you don't have to do that. Oftentimes, postures like this will depend on anatomy and body proportion. Some people have long legs, short arms. Some people have long arms, short legs body length in relation to your limbs it, it varies widely from person to person those things are not important what's important is how it feels to you nice stretch for the lower back nice stretch for the legs lower back stretch is quite a powerful stretch here's the thing if you let the back curve you'll feel more stretch in the lower back if you flatten the back you'll actually form feel more stretch in the back of the thighs the fact that the legs are bent allows me to curve my back and flatten it against the front of the legs if you notice my torso is up against the front of the thighs and I'm going to slowly start to stretch the legs out as the posture deepens I'm no longer holding my feet you might notice head lifted somewhat just so that you're not letting the head drop and curve the upper spine and put any strain into the neck. Breathing normally. Beautiful stretch for the body. Very relaxed version of that Sanskrit posture Paschimottanasana. Whenever you are stretching deeply forward, you have to take your time coming out of postures like this. Sometimes you feel an after effect in the lower back and there are approaches to that just to ensure everything feels okay. Now today, after this particular posture, I actually felt inclined to go into a, a little squat posture that's, a, that's coming up soon. You don't have to do that and I do it very briefly. I'm about to finish this posture off however by reaching a little further forwards and holding the feet and then arching the spine so it really goes nice and deeply into the lower back. Not in a forceful way 
which is a nice deep stretch to the lower back. So I really make the most of this one. You'll know, notice if you, if you look closely, my torso is possibly pushing a little bit away from the thighs as I round the back a little bit more, which gives me a, a stronger lower back stretch. It feels really nice. And the whole thing has loosened up, so I've got a, a, a deeper reach now. So remember what I was saying, you can either come out of a posture like this and lie down straight away, or as I'm about to do, I just felt um, the instinct to sort of just move into a, a squat briefly, just felt quite nice and, and right to do that. Only briefly though, so from there I'm going to very carefully come to lying down, stretching the legs out, so into a little version of Shavasana, tuck in the chin, lengthening the neck, pushing out into the heels, arms down and relax next to you. Now remember, if your back feels a little bit strange after a strong forward bend, the solution is you just bring the knees in. What that does is it opens up the joints of the spine, gives the, the joints a little bit more time to return to their, their normal shape. Whenever you are lying down in a, a lying down posture like this on your back, the best and safest way of coming up is always without fail rolling to one side and pushing up with your arm. So you bend your knees, roll to one side and use your arm rather than your back to try and come up from the ground. That's always safest. Use your arm muscles and not your back muscles. So just bending the knees, tip into one side that actually completes our practice today. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you again soon.